Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All-in-One. In today's video, I will show you how to install shelving on a solid wall such as concrete, brick, or block as shown here. To secure the shelving brackets to the wall, there's a lot of different options out there that can be used, such as these light-duty masonry anchors. But for today's demonstration, I'll be using some Tapcon concrete screws. These are available in various different sizes and usually come with an included drill bit and a screwdriver bit. Now let's go over the instructions for these concrete screws. So step one, using a hammer drill, drill a hole that's one quarter of an inch deeper than the anchor embedment with the hammering function on. Step two, clean the hole using a blowout bulb or a can of compressed air to remove any dust from the hole. Step three, drive the anchor with the hammering functioning off using the appropriate screwdriver bit until it's fully seated. But be careful not to over tighten the screw, just make sure it's snug. Now I will go over how to install the actual shelving. So to start with, you'll need to pick an appropriate bracket for your shelving. Normally, you'll wanna use a bracket that is at least one inch shorter than the depth of your shelf with the bracket covering at least 70% of the depth of the shelf. For example, my shelving is 15 inches deep, so 70% of that would be 10 and a half inches. So I need a bracket that is at least 10 and a half inches through 14 inches long. And the brackets I'll be using today are 11 inches long, so these will work good. Also, depending on the brackets you choose to use, one side may be longer than the other. Generally, you'll want the long side to be mounted to the wall, which will give it slightly more strength. But with my shelving, I will be mounting my brackets with a shorter side on the wall because I need my shelves to be closer together due to clearance issues with other objects in this room. After deciding where you want the shelves to be located, you can then use a level to make a few small marks on the wall to indicate the shelf height. Then you can use some masking tape to mark an outline that lines up with these marks, as shown here. So I now have two rows of masking tape that are level on my wall, and these indicate exactly where the shelves will be located. Now it's time to figure out how many shelving brackets I'm gonna need and what the spacing should be. For the most part, you do not want the distance between each bracket to exceed over 36 inches. Ideally, the distance between each bracket should be 32 inches or less. And if you plan on using your shelving for extremely heavy items, you may have to install a bracket within every one foot. And now I will go ahead and break down the math that I use for these shelves. So the end brackets should be spaced one to two inches away from the shelf edges. And these shelves are 10 feet long. And if we break that down into inches, that's 120 inches. Now, if I subtract two inches from each end, because that's where the brackets will begin, that'll leave me at 116 inches. Now I can play with this number to find the best even spacing for my brackets. So I can start by dividing 116 inches by 32 inches, which is a standard light duty shelf spacing. And this equals 3.62, which is supposed to represent the amount of additional brackets I need after the first bracket. But obviously this number will not work, so I will have to round it up to the nearest number, which is four. Now, if I go ahead and divide 116 by four, that equals 29. So if I have my first bracket in place, which is two inches in from the edge, then space four more brackets at 29 inches apart from each other, that will equal 116. So now I just need to make a mark at every 29 inches, which will indicate where the brackets go. Next, I can use one of the brackets and line it up with the bottom of the blue tape and one of the 29 inch on center marks, then mark the holes of the bracket. Then continue to do the same thing with all the bracket locations. And if you happen to have a bracket that features rounded corners such as this one here, sometimes it's easier to place a small block of wood on top of the bracket. And this will create a nice 90 degree corner against the wall that can help you with lining up your bracket in the correct place. And here's a quick look at the marks I just made. Now I will grab my drill and turn it to the hammering setting, then insert the Tapcon drill bit, then begin drilling. When drilling on a hard surface such as this, I like to just tap the trigger lightly a few times to start the hole and ensure that the drill bit does not slip out of position. Then I begin drilling the hole with a good amount of pressure 
to a depth of one quarter of an inch deeper than the length of the anchor screws I will be using. Sometimes when you're drilling, you may run into a spot where the drill bit does not want to penetrate the wall due to reinforcement inside the wall or some other unusually hard material. For these situations, your Tapcon drill bit may be worn out and might need replaced or you might need to use a heavier duty drill, or you might have to just slightly relocate where the bracket goes. Then after drilling the holes, it's time to blow the dust out. Next, I can start installing one of the shelf brackets using the Tapcon anchor screws and my drill with the hammering function off. And during this step, I make sure not to over tighten the screws. I just get them snug to avoid stripping out any of the holes. So this whole process becomes very repetitive. First you mark the holes, then you drill the holes, then you install the brackets. And for anyone out there having issues on the correct spacing you should use for your brackets, there is numerous shelving calculators you can find online to help you determine the correct spacing based on the size, weight, and the products you are using. And you can also refer to your product specifications as well. Now that I have all my brackets in position, I can go ahead and start installing my shelving, starting with the top row. And to secure the shelves, I'll be using some half inch pan head screws that are short enough to avoid penetrating all the way through the shelving material. To cut the shelving, a circular saw works well, but I would recommend to use some sort of a guide to keep your cuts nice and straight. As far as the spacing goes between each shelf, that's really up to you, but keep in mind the length of the bracket where it attaches to the wall will dictate the minimum space there can be between each shelf. So with this shelving, I ended up connecting it to some smaller shelves that were already in place. To connect shelves together, you can use a small metal flat bracket with short screws as shown here, or you can try to center a shelving bracket right in between the two shelves. So the installation of these shelves is now done. And now it's time to start loading these up with a bunch of retro collectibles. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and please subscribe. And be sure to check out my other YouTube channels. I do have a retro toy channel and a retro video game channel. And I'll make sure to post a link to those down below in the description. Have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.